You're walking down the country lane, steadily to the pub. As you approach the pub, you notice someone standing in the road, completely still. You move closer, realizing that it's a woman in a long grey dress. You say hello, but she doesn't respond to you, so you walk right up to her. You're about to talk to her when you realize she has no flesh on her face, just a skull. Welcome to Ghost Tales by the Fireside. This episode is about an old English coaching inn that is a great example of a place keeping old English traditions alive, which also has a ghost or two. The World's End is a pub in the village of Exton, in Northamptonshire, and was first mentioned in a document dating from 1678. Hecton was mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086, but has older origins. Archaeologists have found evidence of Neolithic, Iron Age and Roman settlements in the areas of the village, as well as an Anglo-Saxon cemetery in the gardens of Hecton House. The name Hecton comes from Old English, Ecker Tun, meaning Ecker's farm or settlement. In 1066, the Lord was recorded as Bondi, the constable. By the time of the Doomsday Book, in 1086, Henry de Ferris was tenant-in-chief, and Ralph of Montgomery was listed as the Lord. Its annual value was £5. It's believed that there may have been a private monastic cell for a few nuns in Exon House. At the back of the house is an area called the Nun's Walk, which was recorded as Nun's Court in the 19th century. Ecton was the birthplace of the father of the American founding father, Benjamin Franklin, whose family lived in the village for over 300 years, mainly as the village blacksmiths. There is a pub called the Three Horseshoes, which now stands on the site where the blacksmiths once was. The World's End was built around the mid-17th century and was a coaching inn that stood next to the old turnpike road. It stands facing north towards the A4500, but in the 18th century, the main entrance was on the other side of the building facing south until new barns and a stable were added. There are two local stories that tell of how the inn gained its name. It's believed that the inn was originally called the Globe. The artist and engraver William Hogarth was known to frequent the inn during the early half of the 18th century. And in recognition of the landlord's skill as a brewer, he painted a sign for the inn showing a globe on fire. And so the inn was renamed the World's End. It's said that the proud landlord took the sign down every night and put it up again every morning to keep it safe. One night he forgot to take it down and by the next morning it had been stolen and it was never retrieved. Hogarth's last engraving was titled Fini, the Bathos, which was a scene where everything was in ruins from the apocalypse, with a broken pub sign reading The World's End. The other local story is that the inn was used as a temporary prison and hospital, used for the captured prisoners from the First English Civil War, the Battle of Naseby in 1645. It was used as a stopping point for hundreds of prisoners that were sent to London to face trial, many of whom died from their injuries and from the bad treatment they received from their captors on the way. They saw it as the world's end. The cellar would have been used as a temporary mortuary, and over the years, many people have said that they've heard footsteps and seen shadowy figures. When a man was working on the gas in the cellar in 2002, he witnessed a man walk straight in front of him. 
He said that he could only see him from the knees up, and that the bottom part of his legs were underground. What would explain this is that the cellar floor was at a lower level in the past. The ghost of what is described as a nun has been seen in and around the inn. The first recorded sighting happened in the 19th century. On returning from a feast in nearby Mears Ashby, a brother and sister came across a woman who came staggering towards them, screaming in terror, saying that she'd seen a ghost. They invited her to walk back to Exton with them, which she did. As they made their way back home, they had to pass Ecton Brook, when they noticed a woman dressed in a grey dress, who none of them recognised. She nodded courteously without making a sound, while they looked on at her in terror, as they could see straight through her. After a few seconds, she disappeared. Another record is of a coachman who was driving to Wellingborough from Northampton around midnight, when he saw the figure of a woman standing still in the road. He stopped the horses and shouted at the woman, but she didn't respond. She just stood still, motionless. He climbed down from the coach and walked up to the woman to try and speak to her. When he approached her, he looked inside her hood to find that her face had no skin or flesh on it, just bone. He was terrified and ran back to the coach, climbing up as quick as he could. He tried to make the horses move, but they wouldn't. They just kept refusing to move towards her. After a while, he managed to turn them and took another route. The last recorded sighting of the nun was in 2002. When a group of customers were in the pub, she appeared in the bar and stood amongst them. She only appeared for a few seconds, but it was long enough for them to describe her as a woman wearing a long grey dress, and they described her as looking distorted, as if she was stood behind frosted glass. In 1995, a customer who was in the bar had just finished his soup when he passed the empty bowl to an old woman, who he thought was a member of staff, who had just walked up towards him. He passed the bowl over, and as she took it, she vanished, leaving the bowl to smash onto the floor. This ghost is said to either be the nun, or the ghost of an old lady who is said to have hanged herself in one of the bedrooms in the 19th century. In the 17th century, a younger man, called John from the village of Ecton, wanted to court the owner's niece, Angela. She was already courting a young man from Portugal, called Johan, and was expecting his child. When John found out that she wasn't interested in him, he followed them both to the cellar, and in a rage he killed them both before killing himself. In fear of losing any business, the innkeeper... Angela's uncle, hid the bodies in hope that no one would ever find out. It wasn't long before their bodies were found and he was brought to justice. There isn't any evidence for this story, but over the years people have said that they've seen the apparitions of Angela and Johan desperately searching for each other. In 1991, when a man was fitting a CCTV camera in the bar, he came face to face with an apparition, which stared right into his eyes. He said that what made him more afraid was that his co-workers were walking straight through the ghost without seeing it. Another ghost that has been witnessed frequently is in the attic flat, and has been seen by many landlords, and it's that of a little Victorian girl, who is said to have died of diphtheria. She just appears in the room and stands still. She has a golden glow around her, and after about 30 seconds, she disappears. Thank you for listening to Ghost Tales by the Fireside. If you enjoy this channel, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. 
It's very appreciated. You can find more about the episodes on the website, ghosttales.co.uk, the Facebook page, Ghost Tales Podcast, and on Instagram, at Ghost Tales Podcast. All music, research, writing, production, art, and sound effects are all my own work. (laughs) 